Do you have Christmas trees in your field that look like this? Then you probably have way pine weevil. Hi, I'm Tony Spano, Hillside Christmas Tree Farm. In this video, I want to talk about some of the resources that I use to educate myself about pests, um, learning when to control them, what to control them with, and just, just my resources. So when I'm out in the field and I come across something new, right? White pine weevil is a big one, bagworms a couple years ago, uh, aphids. Um, I kind of start with taking a lot of pictures of what I'm seeing and then starting to do some research. One of the first tools that I come to is the Christmas tree pest manual. Um, again, this thing has everything. So it's a very useful book and I highly recommend it. Um, I've decided that I'm going to make a series of videos on some common pests that I'm seeing. And I was going to start with the white pine weevil because that one is uh, coming up pretty soon. We're about mid-February and the control targets are kind of mid-March to early April. So I think getting an understanding of that one is a very high, hot topic. So if you've been following along, you saw last year I got devastated by them and cut a lot of my trees out. So this year we're going to control them. So let's spend some time out of the field learning about white pine weevils. So let's see what the Christmas tree manual has to say about white pine weevils. Hosts, eastern white and scotch pines, spruces, especially Norway spruce. For us, we're seeing a lot in our Serbian spruce. Importance, the larva of this common pest deform and degrade Christmas trees by killing the terminal leader in the top two to four years of growth. Damage will delay harvest for one to three years until those trees recover enough to be suitable for sale. Exactly right. Look for dead or dying terminal leader, topmost shoot on the main stem, curled into the shape of a shepherd's crook. Lateral side branches on the upper whorls may also die. If you've been following the channel long, you've been seeing a lot of white pine weevil damage, so <laughs> pretty easy to identify. All right. Also looking for March to April, small round holes or pitch flow on the terminal leader where adult weevil is feeding or laying eggs. June to August, slightly curved white larva up to a quarter inch long under the bark or wood of the damaged terminal. Clumps of fine white slivers of wood under the bark in late summer. The chip cocoons may contain white pupae or brownish weevils, one quarter inch long. Pests that cause similar symptoms. White pine blister rust can kill terminal portions of trees if a canker has formed on the main stem. Eastern pine shoot borer infests both terminals and laterals. Frost can kill terminals, though frost would generally damage other new growth as well. Biology. On warm spring days, overwintering adults move from the ground to the treetops to mate and lay eggs in, hole, in holes they chew into the bark, just below terminal buds on the previous year's leader. The eggs soon hatch and the larvae bore downward under the bark, eventually girdling the top of the stem and killing the new terminal growth larvae pupae in the wood fiber cocoons, called chip cocoons, and emerge as adults from late July to late August. Adults feed on bark of small branches before dropping to the litter, litter to overwinter. Monitoring and control. Begin checking for dying and dead terminals in late June and concentrate on trees that will be harvested in three to four years. Treat the entire plantation when injury becomes too severe to correct with pruning. See Table 1, page 22 for degree day information. Prune out and burn infested leaders before mid-July to kill the insects. Cut back all but one live lateral side shoot by at least half their length to maintain a single stem dominance. Spray only terminal leader of trees with registered insecticide as soon as weather warms to control egg laying weevils. Eggs are usually laid in early May in the lake states and in April in the central states. A second spray between mid-August and late September may be needed to control newly emerged adults. Apply the second spray to the upper half of the tree canopy. Next crop. Plant resistant varieties of scotch pines such as Swedish variety if available. If practical, remove eastern white pine, jack pine, Norway spruce growing in and around plantations before planting. So that's what the Christmas tree pest manual says. Now, 
let's kind of get into some more detailed information. Every year, Michigan State University prints and updates the Christmas Tree Pest Management Guide. In here, we kind of find um, information on what control options you have, growing degree day information, um, when to target them, and some really good information here. So let's kind of get into some of those things. First, I think it's important to understand that when you're spraying insecticides, the label is a law. You need to follow that. You need to follow their safety precautions, application rates, so that you are being stewards of the environment. Right? You don't want to. You don't want to kill everything out there. Let's start with some common definitions. Uh, in this management guide, you'll kind of see something that's referred to as REI, and that is a restricted, restricted entry level, which is a period of time that agric agricultural workers or anyone else must not do hand labor in treated areas after a pesticide has been applied. Pesticide has been applied. This is to allow residues and vapors to dissipate to safe levels for work to be performed. Uh, GDD, GDD 50. Uh, this is also referred to as growing degree days or heat units that are used to estimate the growth and development of certain crops and pests during the growing season. So when you have the target windows, usually they're based on the growing degree days, and with that, your target pest is within its life cycle that you want to control. Life stage. Most pests go through four stages of development, egg, larva, pupa, and adult. The length of each stage, vary, each stage varies depending on the species as well as environmental factors. Control options are also targeted to life stages. Mode of action. Defined as the action of an insecticide at its target site. In other words, the mode of action of an insecticide is the way it causes physiological disruption to its host. All right, now that we know kind of some common definitions, let's get into some of the details of white pine weevil. When to control them, mid to late April, early May. Apply early in the spring to control egg laying weevils, 35 growing degree day 50s. In cool spring, emergence may be longer and require a second application. Baited pyramid traps can also detect emergence. One of the first videos I did on white pine weevil, I talked about these pyramid traps and what they are do is they have a lure on top and those egg laying weevils crawl up them and then you can see them. When you start seeing them, then you know that they're active and it's time to spray. I'll kind of show you some examples of how we did that. Also in this manual, you'll see kind of a list of all the different pests and it kind of breaks up into the different control options. Um, for white pine weevils, it kind of lists that the first adults are active between 25 and 220 growing degree days. The second adults are active between 1200 and 1400 degree days. So when the manual talks about control the egg laying adults, they're talking about that 25 to 225, right? The first, first adults. Then like they said, the larva is inside the tree. It's protected. Spraying isn't gonna do anything in there because they're underneath that bark. So when they talk about the second adults active, 1200 to 1400, that's the late summer when those adults are emerging, kind of getting into overwintering into their overwintering thing. It's another spot where you could control them, but their damage is already done at that time. Also, it tells you kind of a list of all of the chemicals, uh, active ingredients that can be used to control white pine weevils. In general, they are the pyrethroids, and the organophosphates. Let me know what you think about this video. I know it's a little different. It's out of the field, more, uh, a little more research and everything kind of be done here. Uh, not exactly my video style. But let me know what you think. I feel it's good information. I have several other videos like this that I plan on doing. Some aphids, um, some pine, a lot of pine stuff. Why we don't even grow them because there were so many of them. But let me know your thoughts if you think it's worth it or you have something specific you want to be, you want to learn about then yeah, we can, we can research that together. So 